God has given us the church to be able to grow in our faith. God has given us people in our lives to be able to hold us accountable and steer away from sin. But not only that, the church is meant to encourage us to action. We're going to see in today's episode how in this interview, God did just that in the life of CJ. Hello and welcome to Empowering Disciples. My name is Louis Subaste, and in this channel, we love to empower disciples to make disciples, to help them to grow in their faith and to take those steps of faith that God is calling them to take. Today, we're gonna to be listening to a conversation with this guy named CJ, who recently went on a missions trip, and this missions trip changed his perspective, not only on how he is to serve God, but his perspective on the church. We're going to find out how accountability is an important aspect of being in a church family and how the contagious nature of the church passion can help you to grow in your faith. So take a listen at this interview with CJ. There was, there was a couple of challenges that last time we spoke, you, you said that there was a couple of challenges as well with like the teams and, and all of those things. Talk to me a little bit about the difficulties you face there. So. When it came to the teams, there was a couple of difficulties for like me just thinking like, okay, I need to be responsible, like I need to do that. But then there was another problem because I, one of the things I was really looking forward to on that trip was I knew I wasn't gonna be on my phone all that much. I knew I was gonna have a lot of interactions with different people. So I was like, okay, I will be able to avoid some of the sin that I struggle with. Mm that sin being the sin of lust, the sin of the lust of the eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to be in the Dominican Republic. I'll be fine. Like, I won't have this struggle in front of me. Like, I'll just be focusing on the Lord. And this is like, I want to grow so much on this yeah. trip. And eventually, um, I had been getting pretty close to most, like everybody there. Mm -hmm. And one of the people who were there started getting close to me. Mm. But I was like, I don't know if I want to do that, but like, you okay. know, like, like, I, like I want to entertain. I wasn't trying to entertain the idea, but I wanted to stay cordial and friendly. Okay. But I ended up taking it a little too far, mm -hmm. and letting too many things slide, and then it got to the point where we ended up just kind of being in a relationship-ish thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time it happened, it was we had just finished up with the first group. Um, so we had like about a day break and we were watching a movie mm. and I was half asleep and I was like, dang, I'm really tired and I just want to go to bed. So I ended up going, I tried to go to bed early and then they called me and they're like, Hey, one of them, one of the people wants to come see you. Like wants to mm. talk to you. And I was like, yeah, oh, they want to talk to me. I'm like half asleep. I'm not paying attention. And she starts talking. We start talking and then she goes for a kiss and I'm not paying attention because I'm half asleep mm. and she does it and I'm confused mm. so then i just go with it because i was mm. not paying attention okay and then i was like then when i finally realized what was happening i was like oh, okay let's go to sleep i am just yeah good night yeah. so then i go to bed and i lie i hit the bed i was like what did i just do mm. why what was why would i do that mm. and i was just i was just sitting there and i was like why okay hopefully I can explain it away tomorrow. We're not going to, like, I'm just going to say, like, hey, we shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Like, let's not. And then we're on the bus, and she's sitting next to me. And I'm like, okay, maybe we're not, like, hopefully mm -hmm. she's not going to try anything. And she does. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa. I don't, like, and I didn't know how to react to it. Yeah. And so I just, again, let it happen. I was like, okay, maybe if I don't acknowledge it, mm -hmm. maybe think she'll get the hint or something like that. Yeah. Did not happen. And so the next night, mm -hmm. we, she did, she did something again. And me, mm -hmm. who A, didn't know, I didn't know how to react to the situation. And two, have a hard time saying no to people. Because I, it's like, I'm not trying to like showboat or something. Mm -hmm. Trying to be humble. Saying like, oh, I like people. Like, yeah. I don't like saying no to people. But like, I actually, like, if someone tells me to do something. Yeah, it's I your personality. Feel, like, yeah. I feel like I should try to make the person happy. Like, that's yeah. just what my goal is, typically. And so, with both those things combined, we ended up going not too far, but mm -hmm. we did some things I'm not proud of. And I was like, mm -hmm. I need I need to cut this off. I need to stop. Mm -hmm. I need to stop. And the, no, no, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. But just, just to kind of uh, gauge a little bit about that relationship. Uh, so, it, 
there there obviously was uh, some interest between you and there. And, and so so what what made you think it was wrong? Because obviously, if if you meet somebody, eventually there could be relationship or something like that. What what made you feel that it was wrong it, to to kind of start a relationship or something like that? Because for me, I hadn't really seen her as somebody who I would want to go out with. Mm -hmm. I just saw her as a really cool person. Mm -hmm. And so when I did all that, I was like, dang it. Like, I struggle with this sin and I feel like I'm using her mm. as a means to an end. And I felt very disgusted by that. Mm. Like the sec the first time it happened, I felt disgusted. The second time, like every single time it happened, I felt disgusted with myself. Yeah. And I was like, I need to cut, I need to shut this off. I need to shut this off. Yeah. So and then I called her up and I was like, hey, look, I told her to meet me like on like the third floor or something. And I was like, look, mm. we can't do this anymore. I can't. Like, I just, you're cool and all, but like, mm. this is, I'm falling into sin. Like, I can't, mm -hmm. like, I don't want to do that to you. And yeah. so we ended up, she got mad at me, mm. obviously. Yeah. And so we didn't talk for the entire week. For the entire second group that came here, we did not speak to each other at all. Mm. And I was like, this is better for what like so we don't do anything but i felt bad because i was like i don't want her to be mad at me like i know i did her wrong but i don't want her to be mad at me yeah. so the entire second week goes by that group that group I'll, i guess we'll get back to it later but that group is the really the group that showed me like how amazing like like the lord is yeah just like to see him move through people but to get back on what I was talking about before, mm -hmm. by the end of that week, she had called me up. She's like, look, I know we beefed this entire week. I like, I wanted to be water under the bridge. And I was like, I also agree. I don't like ignoring you the entire week because you are cool people. It's like, I, it's not like I don't not like it. It was like, I, yeah. I enjoy your company. You're really cool. Yeah. And then she puts another move and me mm. caught off guard again. Was sure. like, gosh, dang it. And I was like, <laughs> why do I keep falling back into this over and over and so for the duration of the third week that I was there, I was trying, I was like, okay, well, obviously, no matter what I do, mm -hmm. she's still going to come back. I don't know why, Yeah. but I need to, like, I need to be, try to be cold with her. So maybe she'll get the hint, like, hey, maybe I was trying to get her to like, not like me anymore. Okay. And I ended up trying to like, I was being cold to her. I was mm. being like very standoffish. And then, but every single night when everyone else would go up, because the interns were allowed to stay up later because we weren't allowed to be on our phones in front of everybody so yeah. they were, they allowed us to stay up as late as we wanted yeah as long as we got up the next morning and did all of our yeah. responsibilities so i remember during that third week or that last couple weeks or the third group i was the first to go to sleep and every single the maker was like cj why the heck do you keep going to sleep early i was like i just you know i'm just I'm tired guys you know i'm past my bedtime i just gotta go yeah. Cause that's when things would happen, and so yeah. I just avoided it as much as possible. And she mm. started getting mad, and I was like, "Well, I don't want her to be mad, mm. but I also don't want her to keep doing this." Yeah. So it just it kept escalating and escalating and escalating. So it. so you resorted to fleeing. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, right? I tried stopping it by saying we can't. Uh -huh. That didn't work. So I was like, "Okay, I'm just gonna run. I just yeah. I can't." And then. Can you imagine what Joseph felt like? When, oh my gosh, no, <laughs> when this I lady can't. kept coming at like put yourself in those shoes like as you're talking about the story it just reminds me of that you know and just yeah. seeing how how joseph had to like run away and it, it kind of seems like i'm just gonna go to sleep <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna entertain this and uh man that's 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 a tough challenge because i mean especially if i think the goal was for you to kind of have this this time to connect with God, right? And this time mm -hmm. to focus on serving him, this time to to doing these things for God and 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 at the same time maybe fleeing a little bit of your temptation, but temptation kind of found its way to you. Mm -hmm. Um and it kind of in an even more uh, intense way, right? Mm -hmm. Like you may have somebody physically there who's 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 trying to um, have a relationship with you, and uh, outside of you know outside of marriage and, and things mm -hmm. like that, and it can it escalated pretty quickly. Um, so so, what what did you do? <laughs> How did that end up? So it ended up like so. What I would do to try to like how I deal with it spiritually was that I would pray every single night. I was like, Lord, mm. please help me find what to do like and i was like look maybe this relationship isn't bad like maybe if i do actually like 
care about her and maybe if i do like maybe this won't maybe i wouldn't feel so wrong about it so either yeah. lord please just show me if this is the right thing to do like not of course not exactly what i was doing but yeah maybe pursuing the relationship and see, tell me if that's the right thing to do or mm -hmm. lord just help me like just not be put in this situation like help me flee from it yeah or just kill it altogether like the temptation of it even and I just, every single time that I fell back into it or she would like drag me, well not mm -hmm. drag me, but mm -hmm. would somehow find a way for me to stay. And I was like, it was so, like I just, I, while it was even happening, I was like, I feel so disgusted with myself. Like I can't like, mm. this is like, this is wrong. Yeah. Like, cause I'm just, I don't feel like that towards her, the way yeah. she feels towards the me. The Holy Spirit will never let you enjoy it. The mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, when you are in sin, He'll never let you enjoy sin. And, it, and that's, that's one of the things, at first it's frustrating, mm -hmm. but it's times like that that makes you realize, like, hey, I am saved. I do have the gift of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> God has given me his presence. He has given me conviction of sin. So on the, on the flip side, even though it's, it's frustrating that you're doing the sin, right? Mm -hmm. You still have at least that conviction and that, that confidence of knowing, hey, I have a guide inside of me who's telling me that this is wrong. So, yeah. Definitely in some, at, the, at the time, I was like this, like I feel like I wasn't a Christian. I was like, how could I be, mm. how could I have lived my entire life in the Bible, in the Word, mm. and struggle with this so badly? And I was yeah. like, this is, this is crazy. Like I can't believe, I always told myself, like I would never fall, like I would never, like that's not me. Like yeah. I would never fall into that. And like once I see it, I'm running. Mm -hmm. And like to have it there present and just actively on top of me, I was mm -hmm. like, I, I don't like, Lord, mm. why couldn't, like, why, why, why couldn't I just avoid this? Why yeah. couldn't this just not be placed in front of me altogether? And so I questioned myself at least, mm. at, like when at first everything was going on. And then after, so this continued all the way up until I left mm. um, this weird relationship. Even like the other Dominican missionaries started like catching on that something was up. Yeah. And so when I left, they had questioned, like one of them questioned me, like, CJ, so why, you guys are really close. What was up? And I was mm. like, well, I don't want to lie. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I think like we had a thing, but like it wasn't anything crazy. Like, mm. I don't know if it was right. And they were like, oh, okay. So, mm. and then even after she would still text me like because mm. we're all on the same whatsapp group chat so she had yeah. my whatsapp number and she started texting me and i was like oh my like i wanted to go home and like <laughs> yeah like so you went home and the, the problem followed you mm -hmm. okay wow okay so i remember when it first like the whole situation even first happened i was like man this is like killing this like it's killing this like missionary work for me mm. like it's i'm not feeling the joy of the lord anymore like i'm just yeah cons consumed by what this what's going on and i was like it like i was like i want to go home i want to go home i want to go home i want to avoid this i want to avoid mm. this. this is the only way i could avoid this yeah and then even when i got home still texting me and i was like what can i do mm. and i remember i went to a friend it was the first person i told about all this because i was too scared to tell my parents mm. and i told my friend i was like man look this happened to me like i feel so horrible about it like what should i do and he didn't give me the best advice. He was like, look, <laughs> dude, you're you're a guy, you're human, you're gonna make mistakes, dude. Yeah. Like, brush it off, you're fine. And I was mm. like, that's not what mm. I wanted. <laughs> what I wanted was someone Be to careful convict. where you get your advice from, right? Exactly. Okay. So uh. I was like, man, I wanted I wanted him to be like, CJ, what you did was wrong. Uh. But look, just pray forgiveness, cut her off and stuff like yeah. that. He, the only thing that I agreed with 100% was like, he was like, dude, just cut her off. Just mm. don't talk to her at all. And I was yeah. like, that's rude i can't that's so rude but it got to a point where i had to tell her i was like look this isn't gonna work mm. even if we were like even if we were in the same place like this yeah. isn't gonna work like i don't like we really need to stop this isn't healthy yeah like we we need to stop and everyone like she got it finally but every once in a while she'd still send me a text like oh hey how are you and i was like mm. why are you talking to me <laughs> like i like why yeah. Like, I understand she probably still cares about me and stuff like that. But, like, even, like, if it's a friendship mm. and I'm over here, like, I don't, like, every single time I see a text message from that person, mm. I'm reminded of the sin that I committed. So mm. I feel horrible that that's the way it 
I view things and that's the way she views things. Like, so yeah. polar opposites. But mm. that's just the consequences of what I did. I mm. ruined a possibly pretty good friendship mm. and I probably messed her up to mm. a degree. And wow. so I still carry that around and it's still something that I struggle with every once in a while. The fact yeah. that I did that. So yeah. Wow man, that's that's it's hard because when you go into a place thinking you are going to serve the Lord, you know, there's uh, there's opportunity. There's there's this desire to to seek after God and there's this desire to serve God, which which you clearly were doing. But then there's also this temptation when you are by yourself, mm-hmm. right? Being not being in a situation where you normally are with the people who normally hold you accountable to mm-hmm. those things, right? When they're not there, it kind of frees you up. And this is why a lot of people actually have relationships when they go on trips and when they do things like that, because they don't have the same accountability. Mm-hmm. And so accountability is huge in, in, mm-hmm. in the Christian life. And being able to have people, maybe not that guy who gave you that bad advice, <laughs> yeah. but maybe somebody who can hold you accountable is, is, is huge you know, for, mm-hmm. for your Christian walk because it, it helps you to, to stay away from those sins and temptations. Yeah. But there's also some good stuff that happened on this trip, right? There definitely there's definitely was. some 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 moments of joy, some moments of uh, of growth, right? Mm-hmm. So so talk to me a little bit about those things. How how did your spiritual life get affected by this trip? In the so, positive side, in the positive sense, yeah. So just a little quick side check. I remember when I first got back, I was like, I want to go on the trip again, but I need someone to go with me, someone mm. to be hold me accountable. And I remember yeah. I told my brother the first thing I told him when I got back was, Hey, let's yeah. go to DR next year. He's like, No. <laughs> it's like that's not for me i don't that's not for me and i was okay. like i'm gonna try to force you to but we'll see mm-hmm. and okay. then so if i do go back i want to bring somebody with me to help keep me accountable yeah accountability is key man yeah that's that's, that's sure. huge you, you you really can't you can't trust yourself mm-hmm. in many times and that's i learned that and that's why the church is meant to be a brotherhood right mm-hmm. we're supposed to hold each other accountable we're not supposed to do this alone because that's when the enemy will actually try to try to attack you when you're by yourself mm-hmm. when you're vulnerable mm-hmm. that's what he's get when, when he can get you and so man it's good to have accountability so okay mm-hmm. good good so lesson learned go with somebody yeah. who can hold you accountable or find somebody who can hold you accountable there yeah that would also have been good mm-hmm. but Hey, I hope you are finding today's episode encouraging and challenging to your faith. We'd love to get this message out to more people. And so if you could consider subscribing to this podcast and also rating and reviewing us wherever it is that you're watching. We'd love for you to be able to share this with your friends and family so they could be encouraged to disciple others. Now let's get back to our interview. Talk to me about the the, the positive. So definitely the positives. The first week, because uh, I go by... I should probably say groups because it was more a little over a week but Mm -hmm. the first groups that came um i was still learning everything so i wasn't very focused and the ministry that we did was sports ministry so there's two types of ministries that they would do Mm -hmm. um in the afternoons after so it was to go back to the schedule of it the first day normally was intro second day was all dedicated to building Mm -hmm. and then after that the next three or so days would be mornings uh, we would build like the panels and the afternoon we would do ministry Mm. so in the first group um the ministry that i was a part of that they assigned me to was a sports ministry soccer Mm. and so we had to You've never played in your life. Actually, I did. You did. I played quite okay. a few. I played quite Dominican a few. Dominican who plays soccer. Okay. Yeah. So I would have pegged you for a baseball player. <laughs> I never actually played baseball. No? I used to play T ball. Yeah. Wow. What no. a disappointment to your country. I really <laughs> I'm am. Just not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. no. Yeah. So, and we were trying to teach these kids. Uh-huh. Um, so basically, how it would work was that the Dominicans uh-huh. were supposed to be the translators to okay. the kids that they were ministering to. Mm-hmm. And the Americans would be the ones who would be kicking the ball and showing them what to do. Yeah. And so I had to be signed with a Dominican uh-huh. because I didn't know enough Spanish. <laughs> you had to get a translator for you mm-hmm. to translate. <laughs> so what I ended up doing the, for the first day was I had to stay with one of the other Dominicans to help. Uh-huh. And then the next couple of days, I was like, wait, I know just enough to maybe show them. I'd be like, I like when the kids got right, I'd be like, Caete. Or like when the kids would go, I'd be like, oh, dale. I was like, something like that. So they, I eventually was like, okay, mm-hmm. maybe I do know something. <laughs> I can get by. More, I can get by. So uh-huh. every once in a while, the kids would be like, you're American. Like the Dominican kids, like the little Dominicans would yeah. be like, you're American. I'll be like, 
I'm Dominican, mm -hmm. I can't speak Spanish. And they're like, ah, okay. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was fun. It was, I had a good time, but I didn't really, I don't know. It just was, I didn't feel the Lord working through me there at least. Okay. And then in the second group. You're talking though, about the, the first group. Yeah, the first okay. group. So since I was doing soccer, I didn't feel like I was ministering to them spiritually at all. Okay. But then in the second group, which is probably the group I got the closest to, sorry, every other group that, if you guys are listening, <laughs> I'm sorry, but the second group was really the ones yeah. that I ended up enjoying, like, I got close to a lot of them, and yeah. I'm actually planning on going to visit them pretty soon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where, where, where are they at? North Carolina. Oh. So, okay. yeah, I'm going to go visit them in North Carolina, I think at the end of September. Okay. So, that's going to be nice to go visit that's them. That's cool. So, in that group, I was assigned to the... VBS. Okay. And so what they did was we actually ended up going to an old chapel that they had built mm. that they had remodeled kind of in a way and they had like a concrete structure. Oh wow, okay. So and had AC and everything and it was really hey. nice and big. Yeah, it was nice. That was very nice. <laughs> so yeah, for us who had very little AC, okay. that was very nice. Yeah. So over there um, I was assigned to like basically watch, keep the kids quiet and stuff like that. Mm. But they were doing a lot of skits. And in the first week, I was watching them. And I was like, man, I used to be in drama. Like I used, like I, so I got, I was like, man, that's so cool. They're doing drama. And I remember I told them, I told some of the people and they're like, hey, do you want to be part of our next one? And I was like, you'll let me? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that'd be great. So they actually allowed me to help them with the VBS. Okay. And just watching that group minister to these kids which majority of them didn't know spanish mm -hmm. there's only i think like three of the people there like mm -hmm. who were from the states that actually knew spanish pretty well mm -hmm. and they were taught and like everyone else didn't know anything but they were so involved in these kids and loved on these kids mm -hmm. with the language barrier and everything and i just watched that and i was like that is that is the lord moving through them wow even through the language barrier even through everything it was just you could see the kids like so in love with what they were doing and mm -hmm. the kids themselves being able to like just minister to the kids and i was like that's and there were people roughly my a little bit younger than i am mm -hmm. so by the time i was in 20 i was 19 okay. so there's like 16 17 18 year olds mm -hmm. and so to watch them be so involved and love like not to throw shade at anybody at our mm -hmm. church but like i don't see that all that often mm -hmm. like don't get me wrong, there's a lot of kids in our church now who are starting to do a lot more. As a lot of them are doing worship, some of them are doing um, back mm. in the tech. And I've noticed yeah. that recently, but see, like, just it was so different. Yeah. And I was so taken aback by it mm. because not even I'm sometimes like that. Mm. I don't, like, at least I haven't been offered the opportunity to minister to kids, but to yeah. see these people just gun ho about it and just about it. And I was like, that's crazy like that's yeah that's what i want to strive for like that yeah and so watching those because i remember at one point they were doing a dance because they were dancing for the kids i actually have a video on my phone mm. i'm not going to bring it up now but mm. you see just all of the americans standing on the front row just dancing and singing mm -hmm. songs like that i'm pretty sure they don't even know to these kids <laughs> and i was i was just taken aback i was like man this this is the lord moving through mm. these people yeah and to, yeah, to this day, I still keep in contact with a lot of them, yeah. the ones that I got close with. I even jokingly said, oh, I got a CJ fan club. <laughs> so there was like a couple people who would always hang around me. Yeah. And I love that group so much. Yeah. There was so many great and amazing people that I met there. Yeah. And it's, it's nice when you, when you meet people who are passionate for God. Mm -hmm. and I think that that might be what you saw. That there's a there's a genuine passion for the Lord and to serve the Lord, and I think sometimes in churches we we can kind of fake it. We can mm -hmm. kind of go through the motions of like I'm serving, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, mm -hmm. but that desire to serve the Lord may not be there. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're able to do that, especially with a group of people who mm -hmm. are just as passionate as you, that drives you, that mm -hmm. that challenges you, and that that motivates you because it's contagious. You know, I, I, when you look at the early church and you look at what's happening in the early church, it's like God was moving powerfully in them. And then mm -hmm. it says, and the Lord added to the numbers daily, those who are being saved. And so it's this idea of, of the church should be a vibrant, growing community of people mm -hmm. who are passionate for God. 
And I think sometimes we can lose that passion. And when mm-hmm. you lose that passion, it really makes you wonder, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. Are we really serving God? Are we really striving to grow? And we kind of become stagnant. And the status quo becomes uh, just normal. Mm-hmm. And there's and when you see somebody actually living for Christ, it it, it kind of moves you out of your, your, your paradigm. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking like, this is what I thought Christianity was like. But now I can see that, wait, they're doing this. And it kind of drives you like, I want to do that now, right? I want to be yeah. like them. So Absolutely. I remember yeah. when I first came back, I was like, man, I want to serve the church and everything. And we had the cleanup day. Yeah. And I signed my name and everything. I was like, man, I can't wait. Mm-hmm. And then the Sunday came and then you announced like, oh, the cleanup was yesterday. And we had a great time. I was like, oh, <laughs> I forgot that it was yesterday. You yeah. could pro- you, If you find the, the church service yeah. and you can see me in the camera, you'll see me go like this. <laughs> because I'm like a home. And I was like, dang, I yeah. really forgot. Like, that's, yeah. that's bad. Wow. So, but like ever since then, like, it's like I've been like they've been that specific church has been encouraging me so much and mm. I've started to get more back into my devotionals back into my prayer time okay back into my studying time with the Lord and I still feel like I can do more like I want to do more I just don't know what to do with that time mm. but I definitely am so thankful for the, that group they've been such an like, uh, inspiration to me yeah and then in the third group I even told the second group actually to go back a little bit mm. on it because the last day there's a day t- there's a time to share Okay. So you can share how the Lord moved in your life throughout this trip or how you saw God work through you. And I remember I said, guys, um, I kind of have been going like this week has been a little rough for me just for many reasons because that's when the whole mm. thing had started happening. Yeah. And so I was like, guys, watching you guys serve the Lord made me like open my eyes mm. to what I'm really here for. You reminded me why I'm on this trip, like why I'm here serving the Lord. Like, thank you. Yeah. And so this day, they're still encouraging me. And in the third group, they were also, to give clarification, mm. the other groups that we had, the first group consisted of two churches. Okay. The second group also consisted of two churches. One was just much larger than the other one. Mm-hmm. But this last group was only one church. Mm. And they built enough. They built one church because normally it took us like until the last day to finish all of our work. Okay. That second group, like that last group that only had one church, Mm -hmm. we finished everything so fast. Mm. And it was only like a couple of them, I think like maybe seven to 14 of them only Mm -hmm. that went. And we finished the church so fast. And I was like, and they were just a nice, relaxing group. And they also were on fire for the Lord. And they were from South Carolina. Mm. And they reminded me of my family because of how rowdy they were. And (laughs) and I was like, I remember I told them, I was like, you guys are so rowdy. And they're like, what? And I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, that's my family. Like, I love that. that that's what I'm yeah. used to. <laughs> and, like, I'll say, so thank you guys. And that was my last, that was actually my last week. So when they left, I actually left. Mm. So I kept telling them, I was like, guys, thank you for reminding Like, thank you for keeping me up. Like, mm. you guys are the ones, like, the last group I have, and you guys have made it so memorable. Mm. And I keep in touch with a couple of them. Not as much as the second group, but mm. definitely yeah. a good majority of them. And I, they the last couple groups because i think the first group i was like or at least the first two churches uh-huh. i was still trying to get used to it so i wasn't really focused in like on the lord mm. but those last two groups were so amazing yeah. like, they just emanated the love of god through mm. everything they did yeah and it got me really fired up for the lord and yeah. i remember i told the first group actually guys because a couple of them got baptized or rebaptized, mm. and I told them, I was like, guys, look, I something similar happened in our church last year. Not a lot of people got, kids got baptized to my knowledge, but like mm-hmm. we had this fire for Jesus. But don't forget like that it you can't let it die out once you go back to your mundane life. Like you need yeah. to keep it alive. Do something to keep that fire alive. Yeah. And then the next two groups reminded me of that myself. And mm-hmm. I was like, like this is what it's about. Like this fellowship with others, even if you're states away, like to fellowship with one another. Yeah. Like and I to this day would like would love to do that trip again, like to yeah. do that mission trip. And I want to do it again. I have to see my situation with school, with work and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But I definitely want to experience that again and bring yeah. somebody with me for A accountability <laughs> or B yeah. just to have another friendly face. Yeah. But it opened your eyes, right? To see mm-hmm. to see how serving the Lord could be 
such a blessing. You know, this idea of giving and receiving. Sometimes we, we do have that mindset of, yeah, we know it's better to give and to, to, to give and to receive, right? We know because yeah. it's Bible. But when you look at it in practice, when you're actually giving of your time, because you had to pay to go there as well, yes, right? So right, this yeah. wasn't like this wasn't like, oh, all expenses mm-hmm. paid. Like you had to pay to go there. Yeah. And to to pay to go to be part of something like that for you to serve, like that's unheard of, man. Mm-hmm. And I think when you when you put yourself in the hands of God and to be used for his glory, to be used to serve other people, man, that's such an eye-opening experience. I remember my first mission trip clearly as well. We went to Costa Rica <laughs> and it was life-changing for me because I, I saw what a family can do for God and it made me realize that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And so it's a perspective shift. Hey, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I hope that this interview has encouraged and challenged you to grow in your faith. Next time, we're going to see how CJ had to face this temptation even back when he was home and how we can be able to overcome temptation through the power of God in our lives. Hey, I hope you join us next week. And remember that if you did like this content, we would encourage you to subscribe to our channel for you to be able to like and and share this with as many people as you can so that this message can go on. And remember that we are going to continue to empower disciples to make disciples. Have a blessed day.